I missed you, brother. After all the years of talking bad lines, we had a good season last year. I know, man. Some Larry Love. We go 11-5. and five. I mean, What are we doing here? Yeah. I mean, it, it, hopefully it transcends into yeah. this particular Yeah. Game. Well, let's begin there. Well, you played on a couple of teams that, uh, Lion teams in particular, that had good years, were expected, didn't go so well. It was that, that year in and year out. How does the team prevent doing that coming back after a good season when there are expectations? Well, the one thing I think you like is, is that Jim Caldwell is at the helm. He's very, yeah. very steady Eddie. And I think he's going to bring about that steadiness to the Lions and, quite frankly, some of these younger players they just brought in. Amir Abdullah, the running back, certainly fills a need. Um, uh, Alex Carter fills a need. Uh, the Stanford cornerback coming in. Uh, Quandre Diggs, another cornerback from a big uh, play uh, group in Texas, comes in and fills a need. I think across the board, they really filled some needs, and I think Martin Mayhew gets a lot of credit for that as well. But I think the Detroit Lions certainly shouldn't drop off too much. I'm not sure that they're going to be the same 11-win season that they had a year ago. But 9 or 10 wins I don't think is that far off the docket because now there is some depth. you got to talk about Nadama Kinsu and his exit. That certainly was a tough one. But Lions fans, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, we're talking about $15, $20 million difference. They offered what they could do and still stay survivable in that conference with who they have to play. When you look at the Green Bay Packers and you look at the Minnesota Vikings and you look even at the Chicago Bears, they had to make sure that they're viable for the long term. And Matthew Stafford in this group, young group of uh, offensive players, and, and, and Calvin Johnson as a staple, certainly gives them the viability to continue forward and getting Holodi Nada, I think, really answered the bell, at least in the run game, for the Detroit Lions so they can stay competitive. Now that defense is the best in your life, heck, even the best in my lifetime, but they lose those three guys up front. A lot of people believe they still can be a good defense. Do you? I, I, I do, and the reason why, look, Mathis is coming back. He's very familiar. The safeties are back. You got good playmakers there. Uh, you know, Glover Quinn, he, he had seven interceptions last year. Uh, you, you look at the framework of what they had, and mentioning those two cornerbacks they drafted, I think are probably as big a draft picks as they made. Everyone will talk about Amir Abdullah because we need another uh, running back with Reggie Bush exiting. I think the Lions helped him exit at the right time, and Amir Abdullah has a lot of upside. You already got Bell. You got playmakers. Theo Riddick has certainly shown that he can play in spots. How much better is he going to get? I think in long term, and even in this particular year, I'm going to look for some of these younger players to step up and make a big difference. But let's not kid ourselves. It's still a quarterback league. And Matthew Stafford comes off one of his best seasons last year. 4,000 yards passing, 22, I believe, 22 touchdowns and about 12 interceptions. That's a very good season for him. If he can build on that and, and do a little bit better with the weapons that he has, and again, somebody like an Eric Ebron comes out, maybe a Ryan Broyles surprises mm -hmm. us this year finally, being healthy, I think the Detroit Lions can do some damage, certainly on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, I don't know if they'll be as good, but Steven Tullock comes off an ACL uh, deal. Hopefully he's not you know, trying to be Superman this year, right? <laughs> and, 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 and hopefully the defense will, will be solid and good, and the offense hopefully will win us some football games this year. Uh, you mentioned all those offensive playmakers. Heck, your teams, you know, when you talk about the Moores and Morton and Sanders, they had, but it was the offensive line. People didn't, didn't give them enough credit. This is a young offensive line, but it could be a good one. What do you think? It should be a good one, but look, Swanson comes in at center. That's a great thing. Ramirez comes back from the uh, Denver Broncos. That's a good deal. You got Lincoln Tomlinson is coming in from Duke, and everything you hear about him is this guy's a road grader. He gets after it. Riley Reef needs to step up. The big question mark is, is who else is going to play tackle for us? There's a little bit of competition at that position, but if this, the, the, I think the key for the offense and really the Detroit Lions this year, it's certainly both sides of the line, but the offensive line, if they can gel together and if they can come together early and help establish some running game and have some good pass protection, look, 42 or 45 sacks last year is not going to get it done. These guys have to do it as a unit. I don't think there's any one particular offensive lineman that's the guy. There's nobody that stands out at you and you say, that's the guy in the NFL. Fell. They got a bunch of good players, but collectively they have to play great. If they can do that, I think we got a chance. Conversely, on the defensive side of the ball, I think that's a big deal too because you've got new guys. Nadama Kinsu is not out. The edge rushers are there. Can those guys get home? That, that'll, that'll be what we'll have to see. A very tough schedule ahead. Uh, two early, obviously, predictions. We'll come back in a moment. We'll get Ty's thoughts on what he's most excited about Lions, what he maybe he's most concerned about in that difficult schedule. More ahead with Ty Halleck. Straight ahead on Sports Overtime.